think we're live. Great. Buenas noches and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us to learn more about UNC Greensboro. My name is Augusto Peña and I use he, him, and el pronouns. I was born in Managua, Nicaragua, but grew up in La Pequena Habana, La Pequena Habana in Miami, Florida. I'm in my sixth year at UNC Greensboro and serve as director of the Office of Intercultural Engagement. For this video this evening, we will focus on our university libraries, the graduate school, and the Career Professional Development Center, along with our Alumni Engagement Office. I'll be serving as the moderator for our video, which will include presentations by staff who work or have experience in each of these areas of the university. Now, for the past three years, UNCG Chance has been providing an immersive six-day summer experience for Latinx and Hispanic rising high school juniors and seniors. During their time on campus, these students were able to participate in a variety of experiences that gave them a glimpse of life as a UNCG student. They engaged with a host of university professors, current students, and staff to forge a network of meaningful connections focused on academic success and personal growth. The program was created to encourage Latinx and Hispanic students to attend college by increasing their awareness of higher education and showing that it's well within their reach. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused us to pause our in-person camp experience and find a safe way to engage with the students who are seeking information about how they too can reach their goal of attending and completing college. Through technology and the dedication of many passionate UNCG employees, we have brought together our faculty, staff, students, and alumni to share with the students across our state and beyond just how every student can find their chance here at UNC Greensboro. Now, for those watching and tuning in, please add any questions you have in the Facebook chat, and we will ask our presenters to respond after all of our presenters have finished. I'll now share my screen to our, our slide presentation. And I'd like to begin by inviting Melody Root from our university libraries to introduce herself and begin the first presentation. Thank you. Um, so my name is Melody Rood. I am the student success librarian at UNCG. And I am going to provide you with some information about UNCG libraries and how we support our students and patrons. So if you will uh, proceed to the next slide, please. So this is just a uh, image of our um, one of our entrances to the libraries. And you can go ahead and uh, go to the next slide. Thank you. So first, I'd like to address some common questions that we often get about libraries. Uh, the first question being, what does a librarian actually do? So there's um, a lot of common misconceptions about the role of librarians, but I can tell you that a lot of representations of librarians in media are often incorrect or maybe one dimensional. Um, we don't sit around and read all day and uh, we don't go around telling people to you know, be quiet. Uh, librarians have many different roles depending on the setting. But in higher education, like colleges and universities, librarians offer research support um, or any librarian information uh, needs to uh, both faculty, students, and uh, community patrons. So in addition, academic librarians are usually involved with campus-wide information literacy initiatives. So we're often providing instruction to support that. So you're more likely to see us teaching inside of a classroom than behind a desk. The next question is, do I have to be quiet in the library? Well, again, every library is going to be different, but at Jackson Library, UNCG's main library, it just depends on where you're, where you're at. So the library has nine floors, and some of those floors are designated quiet zones for students who prefer that type of environment. But our main floor and several others don't require you to be quiet at all. 
Uh, in fact, sometimes we host events in the library that can be quite lively. It's also a place under normal circumstances where students would go to hang out with their friends. And then we have, what makes a university library different from my high school library or local public library? So one major difference is the way that we catalog and organize our books. Uh, typically, university libraries do not use the Dewey Decimal System, which a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, instead, we use a cataloging system known as the Library of Congress. Additionally, we uh, just usually house more books and have larger buildings um, as well. And we subscribe to hundreds of thousands of database platforms that are uh, well suited for academic research. So everyone goes through the process of learning how to use an academic library. So don't ever assume that you are alone if you feel um, overwhelmed or confused because we've all gone through it before. So we definitely encourage you to ask questions um, because we're always there to help you. And then finally, what are examples of things I have access to at a university library under normal conditions? So at Jackson Library, we have over a million print books and about an equal amount of eBooks. We also sub subscribe to hundreds of databases that houses thousands of academic journals and scholarly articles. We also offer study spaces in all sizes and environments, host special events, lend materials, provide support with multimedia projects, and there's a subject li librarian to help you with your research and information needs. So this is just a uh, couple of images of some of our librarians at UNCG Libraries. We can go on to the next slide, thank you. So some quick facts about UNCG Libraries. So we have two official libraries on campus. One is the Walter Clinton Jackson Library, which we call Jackson Library for short. And then we have the Harold Schiffman Music Library located in the Music Building. We have over 1.2 million print books, 1.2 million eBooks, 110,000 e-journals, and almost 300,000 streaming films and audio files. So some of the, our departments that you'll find in a library include access services, where you can check out books and equipment like power adapters and calculators. Um, you can uh, use our interlibrary loan services as well as utilize textbook reserves. The research outreach and instruction department, which we call ROI for short, provides librarians who are assigned to subjects for research support, consultations, instruction, outreach events, and reference help, including virtual chat. There's a librarian assigned to every department that you can major in at UNCG. So our special collections and university archives, which we call SCUA for short, houses rare books and materials that are over 100 years old. And some fun facts about SCUA are that we have a preserved donut that is 40 years old. And we also house the world's largest collection of original cello music. And finally, our digital media commons is a great space that offers multimedia support, gaming labs, green screens, 3D printing, podcasting, virtual reality, and so on. And you can see on the image on the right here, this is one of our students using that podcasting equipment. So we can move on, thank you. So just really quickly, here's a couple more images that I wanted to share on the top left we have um, some students working in one of our uh, many reservable study spaces. And then underneath that, we have an example of our library workers who are practicing social distancing and wearing masks. Obviously, the other photos were taken before COVID. And then finally, on the right here, we have an image from one of our therapy set, uh, pet sessions. So uh, the library often hosts uh, therapy pets in the library around uh, exam times to sort of help any kind of anxieties that students might be having around that time. And finally, as I mentioned, we do all kinds of instruction on a variety of topics for undergraduate students, graduate students, and sometimes visiting high schools. Uh, one instruction that we often teach to our first year students who are still exploring majors to declare is a lesson on how to use career exploration resources, like, uh, for example, the Occupational Outlook Handbook and the career, uh, Ferguson's Career Guidance Center. And these are just two screenshots of that. Um, 
Yeah, and so these, these resources just help them gather data about potential careers and maybe avenues that they want to explore in college as well. So that is a quick wrap up of the library services and resources. If you are interested in learning more about UNCG libraries, you can visit us at our uh, library website, which is library.uncg.edu. Thank you so much. Thanks, Melody, for that great information and overview for those watching and following online. Please keep the questions coming in the Facebook chat and we'll hold them until after the last uh, presenter. Next, I'd like to invite Marissa Gonzalez to introduce herself and begin the second presentation on the graduate school at UNCG. Muchas gracias, Gus, um, and thank you for that um, introduction and everyone also for joining us tonight. Um, as Gus has mentioned, my name is Marisa Gonzalez, and I am a university program associate at the University Teaching and Learning Commons. I am also a graduate student here at UNCG um, in the Doctoral Program of Educational Leadership and Cultural Foundations. And today I will be talking a little bit about the graduate school here at UNCG based on my experience as a student um, and also as a master's student. Um, although there is still time to think about graduate school, um, I hope this information is useful um, in the future for you all. Um, so your first question must be like, what is the graduate school even for, right? Um, so. The graduate school is essentially a combination of courses that you take designed to help you master a field of study um, that you're majoring in, like an undergrad, but with more of a focus on a discipline. Um, these courses will also help you build your technical knowledge uh, that, that you will then will be able to transfer into other fields um, that could be specific or they could vary um, depending on the discipline you decide to concentrate in. Um, Although it is not mandatory to pursue a master's or even a doctoral um, program, after you graduate, obtaining advanced degrees can be helpful uh, for career promotions and other opportunities. Um, at UNCG, we um, have a graduate school um, that includes 3,600 students. Um, and people from all, all over the country come and um, want to study at UNCG. Um, as, as we can see here, 33 states come and are represented at UCG, as well as, well as 34 foreign country, countries um, and 26 areas um, for doctoral degrees and 55 masters. Um, as you can picture, the degree, the graduate school is very diverse um, as we have students from all over the, the world and um, people come here for the reputation and um, the location, but also for specific programs. Um, so one of the, another important question that you must ask is like, when do we do this, right? Um, so as I mentioned before, after you get your undergraduate degree, you choose whether you want to enter into the workforce or whether you want to continue your education. Um, you can also decide to do both, but it is it can be a little challenging. Um, and you can also go into the workforce and then, then go back and get your education, your advanced degrees later on as well. Um, in either case, um, a typical master's program will be about two years and you can take up to five years to complete it at UNCG. Some programs are longer or shorter depending on the discipline. Um, but Another tip that I have found useful as well is that you can take classes as an undergrad that can count towards a master's degree. It depends on the concentration, but there are several concentrations at UNCG that offer this um, great um, perk, I would say. And lastly, to get a doctoral degree, you will need to go back to school um, for an, an additional four years with a maximum of, four, of seven years. A doctoral degree is considered a terminal degree which means you have reached uh, the highest level of education available in your chosen field. Um, so these are important things that to keep in mind um, when planning ahead for your future and future degrees. Um, and, excuse me, before admissions, um, 
As you can see, and you can read over this list, it is very similar to when you're entering as an undergraduate student. Um, as you can see, like the transcripts, recommendation letters, and personal statements are all very similar. Um, some things that are different um, is that here you don't need an SAT or, a, or an ACT. You will need a GRE or an MCAT or an LSAT. Um, they're essentially like the SAT, SAT, but they're designed to test your knowledge in a specific subject. One thing that I have noticed is that your personal statement too is going to be really important player in your application. This personal statement should describe who you are, why you choose to, why you should be admitted, and how this program will help you achieve your career goals in the future. Um, this will be important piece for your faculty to get to know you and your interest um, to see if you both are a good match, because that will be important um, for the future and working on different projects. So another question as well is to ask about money, right? Because that is very important for us to, in order to be able to achieve these um, goals. Um, there are several ways you can finance your graduate studies, but one of one of them that is the most popular at UNCG is to, uh, to work as an assistant um, for one of the offices at UNCG. So you basically get an assistantship that offers tuition waivers in exchange for 20 hours per week in their office, helping with a variety of things like teaching or helping to teach a course and assisting with other office needs. Um, this is what I did with my master's actually. Unfortunately, um, Pell Grants stopped their funding after you stop um, your undergraduate, but that is not to say there's not other options and other support that UNCG doesn't offer. Uh, you can still apply for FAFSA and they offer um, graduate student loans. To, and another thing that you could consider, consider as well is to be a Minerva Scholar, which is the highest recognition a graduate student can receive um, at UNCG, and which also is like a full full ride, as you would say. Um, but please don't be discouraged um, about the money. I would say don't let this be one of the things that stops you from wanting to get an advanced degree, because um, as as you will pick up, there's there's going to be money here, money there, but you will find money to get um, to to pay for your education. And lastly, I'm gonna leave you with some things to keep in mind that I have personally found helpful um, as I've navigated during these last four years. Um, so one of the things that everyone has told me as, as I started as a master's student and now as a doctoral student as well, is that faculty and their interest and in their research will be very important to you when you choose a program. And the more I am in these spaces, the more I realize how true this is. Um, so when you go in and try to look for a program, I would say this is one of the key things. Make sure that the things that interest you um, are also um, similar to what other faculty members in the program you're looking at are interested in. So that when it comes time to work on a thesis or a dissertation, um, there, you will have enough support. Not that you can't go outside of um, UNCG or the institution you decide to go with, for support, um, because that has happened where you reach other um, committee members um, to be a part of your program. But I would say um, it is important to have it in-house so you will have that support. Um, but this goes hand to hand with research uh, because you will spend a lot of time on this research. So you will spend a lot of time with faculty, but you also spend a lot of time with, with pieces and reading and putting things together. Um, so that will be of importance um, to keep in mind even before you start applying. And one of the things that personally for me has been of great success and I guess of support has been being a part of a cohort um, during my undergraduate. Um, because it, um, it was a time where I felt like I was lost and they were always there to support me and tell me you can do it because doing a thesis can be very challenging and it's a lot of hours and it takes a lot of dedication. But I would say that without their help, um, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't have been able to complete these um, things. And they became my family and I still talk to them today. Um, 
And so that those are some things that I find and I want to share with you all the words of wisdom. But like I said, don't let money discourage you. Don't let anything discourage you. We need we need more folks pursuing higher education, advanced degrees um, per se. Um, porque si se puede, you know, I think there's less than 0.2% of doctoral students um, that are Latinos in the US. So you can do it. And if you need more information about the graduate school, please feel free to reach out to them. Um, and as well as to me, if you're interested um, in hearing more about my experience and other things I can help you with. Thank you. Thanks, Marissa, for that great information and that overview. For those watching, please keep those questions coming in the chat. We'll be sure to address them after the last presenter. Uh, and so next, I'd like to invite Hema Herrera to introduce herself and begin the third presentation of the evening on our Career and Professional Development Center here at UNC Greensboro. Hi, everyone. My name is Hema Herrera, and I currently am a graduate assistant at um, Career and Professional Development here at UNCG. So a little bit about myself. I am a first generation college student. Um, I am Central American, so I'm Nicaraguan and Salvadorian. Um, and I'm currently, like I mentioned before, I'm a graduate student right now in my second year. So um, very soon will I have my master's. So I'm very glad about that. So our office in general provides a variety of different uh, resources or different types of um, help that we can pretty much assist at all times throughout the year for our students. But one thing that I will be presenting on will be resumes. So um, as you kind of may be familiar with, um, pretty much your resume is one of those things that you know, you'll know you be having to pretty much keep up to date, keep using it um, pretty much at any point, whether that be an internship opportunity, a volunteering ex experience, um, a job, and so forth. So we're gonna go right in and dive into the basics. So as you can see on this first slide, visual appeal is um, something really important um, because typically on average, we have found that employers do take about 10 to 20 seconds at a glance to look at your resume. So your format and visual appeal is very important. So things that you can kind of take off the bat from this resume itself are kind of, if you see the little yellow arrows, um, is kind of the sections that each um, that each little like section like has. So if you see, we have education, skills, relevant experience, and so forth. So if you could visualize an employer just receiving this, they're able to tell at a glance kind of what you already um, are able to offer. Um, and I think we can move along. So the next part is just consistency. So this flows right into visual appeal as well. So pretty much how you have your sections and how you have your headings, everything of that nature, you pretty much want that to be pretty consistent throughout your entire document. So if you can see for um, this specific um, student, you can see the education skills, section headings are all the same. And then also the content within each section matches um, accordingly throughout the entire document. So this is very key when just um, trying to make it very easy for an employer or whoever may be um, looking at your resume to see. Another thing too, consistency that follows with this would probably be your dates. So this is probably one of the biggest things that we um, get questions about. So how do I write like my, or format my dates? And so all of them, for the most part, we tend to see them be right aligned. Um, right aligned in reverse chronological order. So per section, you ideally would want to have it um, the most recent up at the top and then so forth um, throughout that section. The next thing is we get a lot of questions about if we need to stick to the one page format. Ideally, we would want to do that, but if you get to the point where you are pursuing your graduate studies or your PhD and so forth, obviously it becomes a little bit different and then your resume would kind of move forward into actually a CV. So that's a completely different um, separate thing from a resume, but ideally we would like to keep it 
at about a page um, if you are an undergraduate student. If you are a graduate student, if it's a little over than that, that's perfectly fine. But again, if it gets a little bit longer than that, then we would want to transition that to a CV. Um, the other thing too that we would want to remain consistent with as far as the formatting is making sure that your font size and also your margins are set pretty much the same. So typically we do advise for your resume to pretty much just be like a start from scratch type document. And the reason for that is sometimes when you use templates within Word, sometimes it can skew your margins. So that is a big thing to take note of. And so as you are pretty much finishing up your resume, things to take note of aside from like the consistency, the appeal um, and the one page format would pretty much just making sure that is as error free as possible. So here at UNCG, we do offer a new platform that's called VMOC, which essentially helps you kind of um, upload your resume and there's a target score that you kind of aim to have and when in doing that, um, you're able to receive feedback and so forth. So that's another thing that you would like to do. I always like someone else that may be good with resumes, even though I help with resumes, I always like an extra set of eyes to look at my resume just to make sure if there's any grammar errors, any, any action verb that isn't necessarily sounding correctly or anything of that nature. Um, so that's another thing. And the biggest part too is tailored. So if you're applying for a job, um, let's say um, it's a job that's really like a temporary job, you would want to tailor that a little bit differently compared to an internship that you're seeking that's um, pursuing like your career and so forth. So make sure that you're tailoring as much as you can. And if that means that you need to kind of take a few things out and mold it specifically to the position you're applying to or the internship opportunity you're applying to, that's perfectly fine. Um, so I know for myself, I have like a general uh, resume and then I have another one that's pretty specific um, for different type of roles that I have had. So keep in mind um, of that when you are writing your resume. So finishing up, um, this is the typical traditional layout that we do kind of see. So if you see, we have the education up, up top and then skills at the bottom. At the end of the day, your resume is a personal preference as far as the order that you kind of want your sections to be. But the thing that I tell most students is pretty much just think about what you would like to prioritize and what you would want your, the employer or whoever is seeing your resume to kind of see first. So if I look at the look at this resume, I'm able to see the education and internship experience pretty fast compared to related experience. Um, so that's kind of how I tell students to kind of prioritize um, each of their sections. But if you can see, even though this is a different resume compared to the other ones, you can still see the consistency, the visual appeal, and so forth that I mentioned before. Um, so I know I ran through that like super, super quickly, and we can definitely keep talking about resumes probably for a solid 30 more minutes. Um, but we have more additional resources and um, help on our website, and I'm going to put it in the chat as well, but it is cpd.uncg.edu. Thanks, Emma. Thank you so much for that important information. Everyone who's watching, please keep those questions coming in the Facebook chat. And now I'd like to invite Yubi Aranda Sandoval from our Alumni Engagement Office at UNC Greensboro to introduce herself and begin the final presentation. Hola, buenas noches a todos. Good evening. My name is Yubi Aranda Sandoval, as uh, Gus mentioned. Um, I am a um, assistant director here in the Office of Alumni Engagement at UNCG. I am an alumna 2017. My majors were psychology and Spanish. Uh, in my current role, I connect alumni, UNCG alumni to help them capitalize on their networks, talents, passions, expertise uh, to empower UNCG students. So 
here at UNCG, our students' success in college and after college is a priority. Um, so while students are here, we highly encourage them to connect with alumni and find a mentor to help them guide them in, in their personal and their professional journey as they are moving out of college. So, and into their uh, career life. So um, let's see, this is my team. Uh, we are focusing on different areas, each of us. Um, my One of my um, focus areas is um, working closely with the Career and Professional Development Office. Um, we also provide um, resources for our alumni after uh, college. Also volunteer opportunities um, is another program that I am um, involved with, online engagement, um, family events, things of that nature. Um, let's move on to the next slide. So a little bit, let's go back a little. So who are alumni? What does it all mean? So we are um, specifically talking about graduate or former students, especially male, uh, one in of a particular school, college or university. This term is refer refers to all alumni, it refers to all graduates from UNCG um, that have gotten or obtained a degree or certification. So an alumna is a singular uh, female of the word, and then alumnus is the singular male form of the word. So in my world, I use these in interchangeably. Um, so it's just something that I had to familiarize myself with because I had no idea that these terms were, were used in my, my career uh, role now. But just to give you a little bit of background, when I say alumni, alumna, alumnus, that's what I'm referring to. So next slide, please. So what do we, what is it that we, you know, do? As I mentioned, we connect with alumni. We bring them back. They've, they've left our university. And usually my thought was, I've left, I'm done. I can move on with my life. Um, but wait a second. So there's so much that so many people poured into me while I was at UNCG or at my college that, you know, it, it just feels good to give back to those students, uh, to those professors that helped me, you know, pave the, the way. So we connect them back. We connect them back by, you know, putting in their talents or their passion, uh, plugging them in uh, with expertise, uh, with their expertise in some uh, shape or form. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit uh, more about what that means. And not just alumni, also students. So let's move forward with our next slide. So these are just the um, some student engagement opportunities. Spartans of Promise um, is a process that you apply for. Uh, these are students that are committed to their alma mater to you know, um, empower other students that are um, lower classmen and to promote a lot of the work that we are doing as a university. So uh, they apply for this and you have to have letters of recommendation. Um, you have to go through an interview process. In this interview process, um, it may sound so intimidating, but trust me, it will work for you in the long run. So we also have like chance camp alumni student panels that we uh, involve our students with. Social media ambassadors, what does that mean? Well, you are already you know, a social media guru. So what we do is basically have you reshare the things that we are doing at UNCG, uh, whether it be student, um, student events or alumni events, alumni student events, which are a combination of both networking. Um, and so Melanie mentioned uh, uh, the podcasts. So we also utilize that a lot. We have our own podcast um, and, and it's called Spartan Speak. Uh, so we have different topics that we touch on, um, military and vet opportunities, net alumni network opportunities, uh, that is also there um, for those that are interested in, you know, having a military career 
after college or um, have one already and just want to be closer to um, Infinity Group, this is a great way to connect back uh, to some of your students or alumni. And then um, some of the, oh wait, yeah. Can you go back just a little bit? Um, so the alumni event volunteers, we have homecoming, reunion, uh, red carpet reception, and the CISA Pudo reception, which is new. Um, so our CISA Pudo reception was scheduled to be this past uh, spring. Unfortunately, Corona hit and we weren't able to uh, move forward with this. But essentially what it is, is celebrating our Latino alumni, or I'm sorry, Latino students that are graduating, but bringing our alumni in to celebrate their accomplishment as well. So we invite everyone to just kind of mingle and celebrate because this is a huge accomplishment that you just got to. And what we want to do is celebrate you in a big way. So, and it does not only mean just undergraduate, it also means that if you are a graduate, um, you know, student, so those that are pursuing their master's or PhD, um, we also invite them as well. So, um, so we also partner up with other um, partners on campus, as I said, the Career and Professional Development Office, as well as the Language and Literatures um, and Cultures team, um, who else, our athletics team, we do a lot of work with them. So we, we try to bridge uh, throughout our whole campus to make sure that we are um, you know, reaching all these um, opportunities for students and alumni. So this ultimately leads up to great leadership opportunities um, as a student and then moving on to um, as an alum. So some of our alumni uh, opportunities, uh, as I mentioned, are the homecoming, uh, which we are moving more towards having our homecoming be our reunion day. So we will bring back people from, you know, class of 87, um, class of, I don't know, 2017, my class, um, or, or the most recent grads um, to just come back and celebrate and, um, and just have a good time and get to know other campus uh, partners or other campus activities that are going on. We usually throw a huge party. Uh, unfortunately, this year, it will look a little different, but I'm excited because We've never had this huge of an event with homecoming. We have an array of things lined up for the whole week and it's usually just celebrated during the weekend. So this year, it'll be a whole week celebration. Red carpet reception, we bring alumni back to speak, to say cheers to um, our uh, students, graduating students and celebrate them. Uh, this is more of a general celebration for all uh, students that are graduating th that year or that semester, December or May. Um, let's see. And I talked a little bit about some of these um, other uh, opportunities. We have also online book club. As a student, you can join um, and you can talk about, you know, discuss these on a platform and um, just engage with other alums across, not just the nation, but the country, because we have alumni from like in Europe that are reading the same book that we are right now and they are joining us in our virtual um, book club discussion um, and we are just engaging in these conversations of what you know we are reading so it is a great opportunity and then the networking events um, I want to capitalize on this because this is where um, many of your careers will then end up shaping uh, depending on the networks that you have. And we encourage our students to make sure that you are connecting and you are, you know, whether it's through LinkedIn, whether it's through um, your own little uh, networks, but expanding. Uh, so we have these um, networks throughout our, um, the nation, um, the Triad, Triangle, Charlotte, Washington, New York, LA, Atlanta, Chicago, um, and if you are interested in going to LA to pursue, um, you know, 
some kind of acting career. We have alumni that are in, you know, this career path and we can connect you with them and see if that is something that you, you know, really want to pursue and um, how you can, you know, pave that way uh, or pave your way there. Also in Chicago, Chicago is another great um, city where performances are like um, big and um, as well as New York. So anywho, there, there is a million ways that you can connect and capitalize on the networks that you um, have. And I heard this the other, um, several weeks back, um, you know, some of us come with an inherited uh, network meaning our parents knew somebody that knew somebody that it was in this career path. For us in the Latino community, we have to build that and it takes hard work. So like you can do this if like some of us are building our network at, you know, at this point, um, there are many of us that, you know, first generation students that don't have that opportunity. So this is a really great way connecting back with your alma mater to capitalize on those networks and really get to know those alumni that you are um, seeking to become. So thank you. Um, if you have any questions, also, I'm sorry, let me go back. Corporate networks. Uh, these are just uh, the companies that we have connections with here in Greensboro. And we also like to connect with them because I, we know that they employ a lot of our alumni. So we also have leaders in those uh, networks and corporate networks that we can connect with and go back and talk and you know um, get some internship opportunities for our students as well. So Gus, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you guys. I think I rambled a little. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thanks, UB, fantastic job. Uh, so uh, for that great overview of alumni engagement, in just a moment, we'll open up the, um, the conversation for, for dialogue, for questions for our four presenters. Uh, we'll begin with questions that have come through the Facebook chat, and so bear with us just a few moments as we prepare those. And at this time also, if, if you've been uh, watching on the Facebook um, Portal, we invite viewers to send in your questions for our presenters. We've already got up our uh, slide. If you do have questions that we don't answer tonight, we have a Latino Affairs uh, Department of our admissions office, Katia Castellon and Margarita Quercado are both there. You'll see their telephone number listed as well as their email addresses. So we invite you to submit any questions that you have um, after this evening. So let me um, see if we can tune over to any questions that have come through. Bear with me just a moment. Um, am I good to answer the question that's in the chat? Go ahead, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, we have like two questions. So I'm going to answer one first and then the other one. So what is the CV? So I didn't give a full description of what that is. So thank you for that question. So a CV it is a curriculum. People pronounce it differently. Vitae, Vitae, I don't know the CV. Um, but essentially, <laughs> it is, it's a detailed overview of your accomplishments. So pretty much related to your academia, specifically. So they're most commonly used to pursue goals within your academia, like I mentioned, or your research. So typically graduate students develop this um, throughout kind of like their professional trajectory. And sometimes it may end up being about like a page or two, but it can end up being longer than that um, throughout the course of pretty much, you know, if you have more research, if you end up assisting in like a class, teaching, anything of that nature, pretty much that's following your academia or research. That is kind of where you give more of a detailed outline of what that entails. So if you're currently thinking and you're like, oh, well, I'm an undergraduate student. Am I supposed to have a CV? You're perfectly fine. You don't need to. It's not necessarily common, 
Um, but you know, depending on your experience, that could definitely be a conversation that we can look into if you are approaching like your senior year or so, and you're trying to, um, elevate that for either a graduate school, um, application or just to have it in general. So that is the first question and anybody can feel free to add to that. If I missed anything, as far as what a CV entails. Good. Perfect. Um, and we also do have guides. We have resumes and a cover letter guide. And I think we also have a CV guide too. And that's also on our, um, on our website as well. So again, that's cpd.uncg.edu. The other question I think was talking about like LinkedIn presence. So uh, the question was how important is LinkedIn nowadays? So this is actually something that was super kind of new to me when I actually started graduate school or more so when I graduated from my from undergrad. So it was something that was kind of new, but it was kind of like, okay, you can go ahead and have this profile and just connect with people. But within the last few recent years, I would say like probably definitely within the last three years has become super, super popular. Um, so if you're not aware what a LinkedIn profile is, I like to think about it this way as like a professional like Facebook type profile. Um, so pretty much you build your connections as far as um, your academics or also more so like your professional kind of um, connections that you may have. So I know a common question that I get is how do I navigate on building my connections on LinkedIn? So some for some that may be adding people that are within your circle and then you end up branching out and finding other people or it could be something as far as like let's say for example okay, we're all on this um, call today. And then let's say I didn't have UB added on my LinkedIn profile. I would be like, oh, I remember I spoke to UB and she mentioned that she had a LinkedIn profile. Let me go and see if she has that. I go ahead and add her. And then that's how that connection is there. And then after that connection is made, pretty much I'm able to see any kind of like post per se um, or updates that UB may have. Same thing for... Um, like Marissa, like if Marissa has something posted there and then I see that we have a mutual connection with UB, then I would add Marissa and so forth. So that's kind of how you build that network. Um, I would definitely say try to be like intentional of what your LinkedIn profile like connections and network um, looks like, because at the end of the day, you know, you want to kind of build that, but at the same time, you know, you kind of want it related with kind of like where you're going towards like in your career pathway. Um, if that makes sense. So anybody else can feel free to speak on LinkedIn. Um, I know I'm, I feel like very new to LinkedIn. I'm still kind of trying to navigate it and whatnot, but that's pretty much the gist of LinkedIn. But I would say it is pretty highly important. So go ahead and start that networking and that profile. Um, I would say probably your freshman or your first year, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, the more and more I hear, um, when you know our alumni are graduated, have graduated, um, they are like, how important is like that is that has become the question that many of them ask. Like, how important? How should I update it? When should I update it? There's like a whole session that could go on about LinkedIn itself, but it has become a very huge platform for employers to go hunt you down and look at your um, your resume, your online resume, if you will. Thank you both. What other questions do we have coming in here? So I see a couple that are gonna, here we go. There's a question coming in. Uh, Marissa, if you don't mind uh, taking this one on, how did you decide on, decide on your career path? Thank you for the question. Um, that's, that's a very interesting question um, because it, I think I just kind of fell into it really. Um, I started as a um, Spanish education major and then realized in my last semester that I did not want to teach um, 160 high schoolers at 21 years old because I thought I could not do it. Um, so I just fell into and, and it was right then and there where everything just kind of aligned. Um, an assistantship popped up 
late May and then they told me I could still apply for my master's. Um, and then I just did. And um, the assistantship that I was doing um, is where I guess I, I developed more um, skills around teaching and learning. Um, and it's where eventually I got hired. And now it's how I fell into the um, doctoral program. And now it's, it's coming into all these things. So I think it's just a matter, well, for me it has been a matter of just getting into things that you think you might not be interested in and just doing it and see if you do and if you don't. And if you don't, well, you move on to the next thing. And if you do, then keep on going. Um, and I've been pretty blessed um, to be able to have those things for me. But I, you all too, you just have to go and look, busca, and you will find. Thanks, Marissa. So we have a question uh, about the libraries, Melody. I wonder if you can take this one on. So I live near UNCG, but I'm not a student. Can I still come use the UNCG libraries? Yeah, that's a really good question. Yes, um, UNCG libraries are also public libraries. So you can, if you're a community member, you can come in and um, fill out a form and uh, get yourself an ID made and you can come use our libraries. Um, uh, during COVID, I think that there might, there are some things that have changed. We, we usually have computers set up for like fast computers where you can like check your mail or do stuff like that. I think that some of those things might have changed, but you're always welcome to our library. Great, thanks. Thanks for that. We've got another question in and this is for anyone who as an answer, how, how do you list degrees or education or maybe job experiences that are from other countries? How would you go about doing that? Yeah, I can um, answer that. So as far as education, um, regardless of, you know, if you attain that at a different like country or even different institution, because that also applies as well. Um, pretty much you would kind of want to still follow. So like, let's say follow like the format. So let's say you're attaining a new degree at UNCG, um, you would have UNCG listed first, but then like, let's say you attained a degree in Mexico. So obviously that would just follow underneath that because of the kind of like the time frame. if you wanna do the reverse chronological order that I mentioned. Um, and then you would still mention like what type of degree you actually attained as well, or if it was a certificate, um, you can actually have another section that says like certification and skills and you can put those together and that can be a separate section it's personal preference on that end but you know if that is your most current degree that you have attained as far as education then you would just use that as your primary education and you would list that on there and the same thing goes for experiences as well okay great great sure there, there may be a little bit of additional time for the graduate school or the admissions office to review those uh, materials from other institutions that are from other countries, but uh, generally those things can, can be reviewed and you can be given the proper credit for things that are coming from other systems, right? Great. Okay, the next questions come in. Um, Yubi, you might head this one up. How many Latinx, Hispanic alumni does UNCG have at this point? That's a fun fact. Um, <laughs> so we have about 1,200 uh, alumni in our network. And that's not to say that you can't tap into student organizations who are, are connected with other alumni from other schools. Um, so that's another really great way to connect. So for example, I know Hema, you are an assistant uh, grad here at UNCG, but you went to Chapel Hill. I can probably connect with you and, you know, capitalize on my networks that, that way. And do you know someone who, you know, studied this or researches this and you can look up other people um, and connect me that way. So um, I know that we have an organization very new. Um, they're uh, called Alpha. Uh, it's the Association of Latino Professionals for America. And they just began their chapter. Very huge hit because they're now like 70 members. Um, 
Marisa and I are um, advisors for this group and we're just, I'm blown. I am blown at their like tenacity of not just like networking within like alumni. It is like across the country. So these are kids that are very hungry and not just from like our business school, no. They, these are like students from across the schools uh, here at UNCG. So our uh, HH, HHS um, and um, the School of Education. So these are very hungry students that want to connect. So we, although we have 1200 alumni, there's millions other of students uh, that, I'm sorry, alumni that they can connect with or professionals. Great, great. Thanks, Yubi, for that. And then maybe we've got one more question here. We'll try to wrap up in about uh, five minutes or so. This is for, for all of our presenters uh, this evening. Can each of you talk about how you've gotten to Greensboro and to UNC Greensboro? Maybe who is one person who um, helped you to get here? I can start that. Um... So again, my name is Melody Rood. I'm the student success librarian at UNCG Libraries. And prior to being here, um, I've only been with UNCG for a little over a year. And prior to that, I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, working at a community college um, part-time. And I was just looking for a full-time librarian position because I had just recently finished up my uh, graduate program in uh, uh, library sciences. Um, so yeah, I was just looking around trying to find jobs. I, I didn't have the best of luck finding a job right out of grad school, to be honest. Um, it took me a while to get the job at the community college. But once I was there, um, I was regularly uh, keeping up with what was out there on the job market, as well as trying to be um, up to date with different organizations, uh, library organizations where uh, professional development was happening. Um, and I just came across this description for the student success position. And I just fell in love with the description. It uh, focused a lot on student success of non-traditional students. So our non-traditional students could be first generation students, adult learners, transfer students, a lot of students that I was already working with at the community college and a student that I was when I was an undergrad um, as a Korean American immigrant first generation uh, student. It, it was just, uh, it, it was really, it just really spoke to me. And uh, I, in addition, um, one of my colleagues at the community college, um, her children went to UNCG and absolutely loved it. And uh, couldn't speak more highly of it. So um, I just sort of knew that it was the right position for me. And once I got to UNCG, I, I, it was absolutely the right choice. And I was very excited to become part of the UNCG community. Thanks, Melody, and we're glad you're here. Thank you for sharing your story. Dale, come on, who's next? I can go next, that's fine. Yeah, that yeah. is <laughs> um, So for me, mine like literally goes all the way back to high school. Um, so UNCG was um, within my top two. Um, so I remember I, I applied early and everything and I was pretty much set to go to UNCG. Like in my mind, I was like, I'm going to UNCG cause I'm like in my mind it's that imposter syndrome that was kicking in. I was like, I'm not gonna get into U Carolina. So um, I'm going to UNCG, um, but I loved like when I toured campus, um, I just loved the feel of it. And so even though I decided to go to UNC Chapel Hill for undergrad, when I just when I decided to pursue my master's, I wanted to like actively look at schools that I was interested in, like in high school. And so UNCG was definitely like on the like my top of my list. And so I actually you know, I had a bunch of schools, I narrowed it down to like five or so, narrowed it down to three. At the end of the day, I only ended up applying to UNCG. So I was like, you know, if it's meant to be, it's gonna be, and if not, then we will see what else I'm gonna do. Um, so when I got into my program, um, student affairs program here at UNCG, I was very excited to just see how much 
diverse like the campus itself had become like even just from like what I think like five or six years before that um so I can see myself more in the campus community I saw that there were more Latinos on campus I saw there was more representation and just about every community and so I think that that's something that drew me very like quickly to UNCG um so I remember go coming for like our um I can't remember what it's called but we call it like spark um for our like interviews and all that good stuff and I literally was like okay like you know as long as I'm as long as they tell me I'm in I'm coming here um and so I've been very fortunate that I have my graduate assistantship that does cover my um tuition costs for in-state which is such a relief especially um you know being first gen, not necessarily knowing what financial literacy looks like until like now. Um, so all of those like parts, it just worked out how it was supposed to be. And I think like Marissa was talking about like how she got into her career path. And I'm like, I just got to UNCG, like it just was meant to be and it just fell like right into place how it was supposed to be. Um, so I'm very fortunate of the experience and how much I have learned in just like a little over a year. Um, and even just the connections, like it's amazing how many connections I've I've made. And I know like even just working with Chance, that's been one of like the biggest things um, that has helped me in my professional development. So very glad to be here. And that's pretty much how I ended up here at UNCG. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Really, really powerful story. I also it started from high school and I was like, I don't know if we want to go all the way back to 2012, but here we are, right? Um, so I am actually from Greensboro myself, um, but I remember driving by UNCG ever since I was little and it was just a dream, but I was like, I could never, ever, ever do that. Um, and I remember I was a part of the Big Brothers Big Sisters program and they would bring us here and they would tell us the cost and all these things. And I was in middle school actually and it just sparked that interest in me. And when I was a, a junior, senior, um, everyone around me was applying and I was just silent. I was like, there's no way I can get into any school. Um, I didn't have terrible grades or a terrible GPA either, but this is that not knowing, right? That not knowing piece of like how, how to pay for it. My mom's a single mother and she's undocumented. It's those pieces, the ones that really stopped me from like going early and doing early on. So I applied, I think it was the last day to apply March 1st or something like that. Um, and it was, and it was, it was, I think, my aunt was in a car accident and I still submitted that. I went to go and serve and I still got back and submitted. Um, but it was just really, for me, like, again, all the things have lined up for me in that sense because I got my financial aid package and it was enough to cover everything and a little bit more. Um, and I got in, which was actually the most mind blowing thing for me um, because I was gonna go to GCC. Like that was my number one um, choice. And so when I got that letter, like Emma, like I was like, I'm, I'm going to UNCG, there's no way around it. And since then it has become my home. Um, I'm so fortunate to still be here and be a part of this familia that we're, that we're a part of here at, at Chance and also other groups on campus. Um, I'm proud to see it grow as a student, so, you know, as Emma has noticed, um, there was only 4% Latino when I got here and now we're more than 10%. Um, so we're, I'm very proud of where we are today and yeah. looking forward to where uh, what else we can do so that's how i got here and i hope to be here much longer thank you thanks marissa you may bring us home <laughs> so for the longest time i attended gtc um well gtcc and rcc the community colleges um i was uh, undocumented and then became a daca recipient um, because of my status, I wasn't able to transfer to a four-year institution without paying out-of-state tuition, which was tremendously high and I couldn't afford. So once, um, once I adjusted my status through my spouse, uh, I was able to pay that in-state tuition. And so I applied to UNCG. Um, I honestly, my thoughts were, I'm going to apply to UNCG, get my prerequisites done for pre-med, and move on to Carolina. Little did I know that my professors were about to have the biggest impact on me 
for the rest of my career. And um, well, what I have had now as a career, but anywho, my professors um, here at UNCG were very, very forward with me. And I, one of the things that I will always remember from my professors uh, was they mentioned, I work for you. I am here for you. Utilize me. I have office hours. You need to come to me. You have questions. I am here for you. And to me, that was like, that was music to my ears because it was like, oh, I can, I can actually approach this, this person who I see like unreachable because I mean, let's be honest, we are just like looking at some of these professors and you're like, you are like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's like, you are actually someone that I can go and speak to. So Gabby was one of them, Gab, uh, Dr. Gabby Stein, she build this great relationship. I heard about her lab and I was like, I want to be in her lab. And I was interviewed by one of her graduate students. Um, and I joined the Caminos lab and did some work, awesome work that, you know, reflects back to our community. Um, and I, I fell in love with, with being here at UNCG. And honestly, um, I don't think I would change it for anything else. Um, I am in the process of applying for my master's. And so that will be um, a new journey that I begin, hopefully here again at UNCG, so. Thank you, Yubi, thank you everyone. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to thank all of our presenters, Melody, Hema, Marisa, Yubi. Uh, you all haven't seen Caleb, but Caleb Cuthbertson is behind the scenes making all of this stuff work. There's an even larger group of dedicated UNCG employees, faculty and staff who have been with Chance from the beginning, who are rooting for you all and who are also in the behind the scenes making all of this possible. So publicly, we want to thank all of them for their dedication. Once again, thank you uh, for, for the important information you've shared. If you've been watching or following along online, please be on the lookout for an email that you'll receive with a survey. If you fill it out, you're entered into a contest to receive some, some really great UNCG branded swag. For more information about UNC Greensboro, uh, how to apply, please reach out to Cast Katia Castellon, Margarita Quercado in our admissions office, uh, Latino Affairs Department. In just a moment, I will put their emails and their telephone information up on the screen. We wish you all good health, good luck in your studies. Until next time, buenas noches, cuídense mucho, and uh, good night. Thank you all. <laughs>